With Alien Covenant now on a wide release, I'm sure many of you are left wondering what really happened to Elizabeth Shaw. This video will be going into spoiler territory, so please, you have been warned. If you haven't seen the film or read any spoilers, then it may very well be worth saving this video until after you have seen it. That way, you can join in the discussion in the comments and offer your own thoughts on the matter. That being said, if you have seen Alien Covenant, then you are all well aware that Dr. Shaw is dead, by David's own hand in fact. It's a revelation that, within the movie and wider narrative, holds a lot of significance. Although Shaw isn't alive when the crew of the Covenant lead their expedition to the planet, we do see her in some form and she is in fact the linchpin to the entire story playing out in the way it did. As the crew are on their way to Aurigai 6, Awoken from hypersleep and having to initiate repairs to solar energy panels, they experience an interference. The interference we soon find out is in fact a form of a transmission. A song. Take me home, country roads. The origin of the song and the transmission we soon learn is Elizabeth Shaw. As the crew land and begin exploring, they quickly discover the crashed juggernaut and within it, Elizabeth's dog tags. Prometheus uniform and a photograph. We see where Shaw had been bedding down, in a hypersleep chamber previously used by the engineers, and, upon entering the cockpit to the juggernaut, Orem activates the hologram recordings. Showing Elizabeth Shaw on the controls and singing, this would be the last we see of her until later in the film, where we see her gravesite, a tombstone, and even a garden. We learn that David had apparently loved Shaw, and upon her death in the crash the Juggernaut suffered, he thought that burying her in the garden would be the most fitting place. Those that have seen Covenant will now know that David clearly has emotions. He experiences anger, love, and even sadness. Within the prologue, we see David and Shaw interacting, and the affection between the two is clear as day. Many people, however, will potentially throw this back and say that this was just a ploy from David to gain her trust. The thing with that statement is that it doesn't explain why. David does not need Shaw to fly the juggernaut. He does not need her to read the engineer language. And he doesn't need her trust to incapacitate her either. It also doesn't explain why David cried upon telling Walter of her death and revealing the tombstone. David, as soon as his head was reattached, could, if he chose to, kill Shaw and fly off to wherever he pleased, free to create and wreak havoc, even using Shaw's body to whatever end he desired. Later in the film though, we learn that David did in fact kill Shaw. We are shown Shaw's corpse and though it isn't explicitly stated, we see her dissected abdomen and the implication is that David has experimented on her, using her reproductive system to lead to the eggs that contain the facehuggers. There is a very key scene afterwards, where Daniels is exploring the Hall of Heads and discovers David's sketches, his artwork. One such piece is a very Giga-esque sketch of Shaw, posed with a broken jaw and interwoven biomech appendages protruding downwards. The relevance to this piece is that it shows not only is David extremely creative, being that he sketched a beautiful piece of artwork, but also that the sketch was symbolic of what Shaw had become. The film itself is very much themed with creation and how David feels about life and death. We learn that David can in fact create, and that he is saddened when he learns Walter cannot be creative. In an exchange, David roars how he believes in creation, and we also learn from Prometheus that David himself believes that in order to create, sometimes one must destroy. How do we know that David though completely insane, is not a cold-blooded killer in some sense. When we see him dropping the payload of Black Death onto the engineers, he is crying. Though he knows he must destroy them to create, he is saddened at that. When we see David talk about Shaw, though he had affections for her, he killed her because he had to use her to create. He wouldn't have spent the time building a gravesite and a garden for her if he held no affection. Though David is a killer, he kills with conviction. His belief is that humans are not worthy. They are beneath him, and they have had their time. Being that the engineers themselves created humanity, and humanity created David, a superior being, they must also be beneath him, and must die. 
Their deaths are not without purpose though, as they lead him to his ultimate and perfect creation, the alien we see in Covenant, his perfect organism. Their deaths served as a gateway for a better creation, in David's eyes. So what really happened to Shaw? We don't know when she died, or how specifically. We do know David killed her, and due to her depiction within the film, along with the symbolic sketch, it's likely he began experimenting on her. To create, one must destroy. David, in his efforts to create the eggs, he destroyed Shaw, and Shaw became a form of a queen. Being that Shaw likely is the direct reason we see the eggs in Covenant, you could say Shaw was the first alien queen. But what do you guys think of this? Did you like this end to Shaw? I've seen many discussions on why Alien Covenant was good and bad, and many people say this was a terrible ending to a great character. As much as I would agree with this, I will say this on the matter. The story of any movie is not there to serve the characters. The character must serve the story. Unfortunately, the story they wanted to tell would not have benefited from more of Shaw. As Covenant is very clearly a bridge between two concepts, Prometheus and Alien, if they had shown too much of Shaw and explained too much, it would have become much more of a sequel to Prometheus, rather than a bridge and edging closer to the Alien prequel we were promised. Though I don't necessarily agree with the way they executed this, I can see why it was done. I'm hoping though that in a special edition of Alien Covenant, or the Blu-ray, we see some more scenes, some interviews and explanations as to Shaw and what her role is in the ultimate creation, whether her death served as the catalyst to it, and what it means moving forwards. We know from set reports and interviews that Numi Rapace was on set for two weeks, and it's likely in that time she would have recorded more than just the prologue we saw in the viral marketing campaign. So with that in mind, it would be really intriguing to see moving forwards what was left out of the movie and what could potentially delve further into it, into explaining what her role is and if she is indeed an alien queen. But as always guys, I would be very, very keen to hear your thoughts on this. Has anything I said resonated with you or do you entirely disagree? As yet, we don't have the answers, so all of this is speculation on my part and I welcome a differing opinion. So drop your thoughts down below in the comments section and if you did enjoy this video then please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more in the future. I've been Mr H and until next time, I'll catch you in the comments section. Only me guys, just another quick message I had to tack on the end of this video, I am really really sorry. Thursday I launched my giveaway video and the response has been incredible, I was not expecting so many comments at all. So I replied to as many as I could that morning and since then I've been reading every single one but unfortunately I haven't had the time to reply what with between my day job and trying to make videos for you guys, I've just been a little bit swamped but I do apologise. I just wanted to say I am overwhelmed by the reaction and I really am truly humbled. The winner will be picked at random from the comments so I really hope no one is disappointed if they do not win. I am looking to probably run more and more competitions into the future and especially when hitting big milestones with the channel. The deadline itself you have until the 25th of May to leave your comments and enter. After that I will get everything set up to select a winner and then a video will be released announcing it. So please stay tuned as I will need the lucky person to message me on YouTube so I can get their details and then get the prizes shipped out to you as soon as possible. Once again I can't thank you enough for the support. Good luck everyone, and I'm really sorry I had to tack this on the end of this video, but it is my first giveaway, so I kind of forgot to mention the rules and the deadline. I do apologise, and I will see you in the comments section.